now. Very interesting. I have a next brethren from back to watch the program. And I'm linked with this man and I say, yeah, lonesome, I have to talk my part of things to car. We go through the same thing. What well, one, brethren? Yeah, I'm here, mate. I'm here, I'm here. Yes, man. Yes, um, you know, give me some rundown. From where you got to, I'm in back to. From police, go right back and, and the world mix up and the world thing. Just go and get the people them the rundown now. Well, as a youth, um, I was born in Trenchtown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, back in the days, you know, man had was to move because of politics, movements and that. And then some people must have come to Trenchtown and tell all the rap gonna bring them back to Africa you know in this time my dad was uh, one of the followers of Martimus Planner at the time and then they move loads of the, 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 the lads them from um, Trenchtown and bring them to Baxter Baxter was the first uh, ghetto community because you got the moonlight city over the train line where man the man goes fishing and that and you know, when you look at back to that time, no man. Listen, man, I'm on a, I'm on an interview. Could you please step out of my argument, mate? I'm on an interview. Could you please step out of my fucking argument, mate? All right, run, run, got you, got you. you. Know, I'm coming out here, yeah, so I can do. You know what I mean? I'm, I, you know, I going outside and chat with you, yeah. Yeah, man, cool, cool. If no, no, you don't want to talk in a Jamaican language. And you know, uh, yeah, you just want to do your, your, your talk in a your language you're talking. You're good. Yeah, man. Got you. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Some people are just like flags, man. No, you start echo a lot now. Just tell him, say you just want to talk. Just, just, yeah, just tell him you want to talk that way. I, 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 listen, I come out, me, you can chat, yeah? Yeah, but it's an echo. It's an echo. Yeah, it's echoing. Is it still echoing? Yeah, it kinda. Go on, maybe hear you. It's still echoing. Yeah, yeah. Go on again. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, mate, yeah. it is like, you know what I mean? Man to man grows up in the ghetto, and, you know, in the 80s, you see a lot of stuff going on, like, you know, a lot of politics, affliction was going on in them times. We remember um, a place we have called Socialist Joint in the middle of Bakto, otherwise known as Majestic Garden, where they say um, labor right coming from Olympic Way and um, from Unstay Lane, and they kill a lot of people. Like, you know, they come and kill a man called Lastran, and they kill quite a few people at the time. You know what I mean? So it was really, 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 and truly uh, a devastating a very devastating situation in that time because I remember as a young lad um, coming from school because I go to Tavares Garden Primary School and then from Tavares Primary we leave to go to Isla Selassie um, which they upgraded now to a comprehensive high school and you know to come back in the community of Majesty Garden we had to take shelter in Tough Gun Studios some people as was to run in lots of different different factories, you know, to, to, to escape from gunshots, you know. Even my mom and my dad asked to barricade us in the house in the time to prevent uh, people from kicking off the door and kill us within those times. And I witnessed with my eye, looking through my window, in these times when um, Portia Simpson was the MP for the area, you know, she comes with a, a car with loads of they call these bags in those time crocus bag, you know, with all different type of guns, you know, some shine one with spinning uh, barrels, with um, brown angles, with chrome angles. And she would give it out to man, the man in the area to, you know, fight uh, politics war, you know, because this is what I call it. I call it politics. It's a trick because if you check it out, all of these people is the same. It's just one a body with two different heads. They are all the same for me, really. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in those times, it was so terrible. So much thing was going on. People was looting after the eight is finished, and you know, it's like uh, inflation. I mean, in the 
in the in the in the in the PMP area, man find it hard to find food to eat and whatever. Most of the man them have to resort to fishing. You know, so some of the man them who don't like to work or go to fishing or used to grab two bag or go on the road and sell uh, a tire or sell a building because we got some great Sam seller who used to be in Majestic Garden man like Bells. With one eye was one of the top Sam seller who used to sell can. A next man called um, Finn and Pluck. He was one of the next top Sam seller. And the latest man in the business now who is doing it now is a guy called Diamond D, <laughs> who is one of the next top um, Sam seller. But when these men go out there and can people and get money and the people reported it to the police station then the police would come and want their cut and then release them after you know because uh, there's a lot of corrupted police over unsafe police station you know i witness enough of these police do a lot of shit and bullshit within the area you know like man would be like breaking the factories and that you know, I, I remember back in the days as a youth, they would like get some tire and uh, they would light uh, a fire against the wall at the AMC uh, in, in, where the gully is in back to our majestic car. And they would light a fire and burn the wall and then they would wet it with water and then wrap a towel over a, um, <laughs> what you call it, we would call it a, a sledgehammer. But they, they a sledgehammer and they would beat the wall with it until they could go straight through and then when they reach the steel and they cut, cut it out Criminal. and then they would break in the factory mm. and then they would steal things just to sell and to send their kids to school. And whenever these things happen, then the police from Unsay would come over because they want their share of the spoil. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm. they know that it's hustling a run. They want to find out because they always got their informers telling them who's doing what and what's been done. So these lads need to get gear cut. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. And, you know, these times were some, some terrible, terrible, terrible times within in, 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 in these dispensation of time where as a youth growing up and man's like me, you know, has to get involved in a lot of stuff that I didn't want to get involved with as a youth because my mom... You know, her mom's a Christian, and my dad's a Rasta because of the Rasta fear and religion with Martin Musclana and that. So, within this um, dispensation of time, man was wanting to, like, you know, escape from all of these things. You know, so I used to start going to church with my mom and dad. So, I end up, you know, because of the church. The church keep me out of a lot of what was going on, but I was still around seeing what was happening and seeing what was going on and, you know, a lot of things that politicians would be doing and have their henchmen and a lot of things that the police then from Unspay police station would do, you know. You would have police from Unspay police station would hear that somebody in Majestic Guard is giving trouble or back to and they would just come and warn you. And tell you that, look, look, if you don't, if I hear your name call again, you're dead. Whether you got a gun or not, if a girl just go over there and say blah, 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 then, you know, these police will just come and kill you, you know. And police and have the name. On Sunday, Give me some name, yeah, no? There's a, police, there's a police called Mr. O'Connor that they call him um, Ox. They call him One a Day, you know. I can remember there was a guy called Derek Sanders. You know, they said he was giving a lot of problem in the area, a lot of problem in the community at the time. And, um, you know, Mr. O'Connor must have come and warn him, you know, and tell him, said, listen, if I hear you being called again, you're a dead man. You know, and he must have got some affliction with his girlfriend and must have beat this girl. And she went and reported it over the police station. And in the same day, the guy was sat down on the wall. The face in where they got the church, the Anglican church in the Majestic Garden. And while the guy was sat down on the wall, um, what happened is that he saw the, the, the car of Mr. O'Connor was coming down because this man drives fast with his gun in his lap or his gun is hanging out the window. And the guy saw him. The guy didn't have a gun or nothing. 
but he rushed into the, the church and was in the church. And there was a caretaker who's dead now. His name is Mr. Ken, was there. And Mr. Ken, because I was young enough at the time, going to the Sunday school over there, and it was the evening when I was supposed to go to the Anglican Sunday school with Mr. Cover. And that's Mr. Douglas Cover. He was our Sunday school teacher at the time. And, you know, when I decided to go over there and, and to look, um, unfortunately, Mr. O'Connor didn't know that man's like me was eyeing and watching. And he put the guy to kneel down in the church and show him and then put a gun on him in his hand and take the gun out, put it in a bag. And Mr. Ken was shocked, opened his mouth and asked him, whoa, 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 whoa. And he said, you see nothing? You see nothing? And then Mr. Ken said, no, I don't see nothing, you know? So he killed the guy and nothing come out of him, you know? And his parents, I was buried, you know? Mm. And some of these things not right, you know what I mean? And when I see stuff like these, happening in Jamaica, I tell myself, this is not the place I want to live for the rest of my life, mate. You know? Mm-hmm. I prefer to move and go abroad to live. So, um, there was a lot of shit that we used to come into Kingston Harbor and, you know, a lot of lads like us want it was the story and the shit. A lot of men escaped by throwing away. A lot of men turned fishermen and go into ship and to find friends on the ship just to just to escape what was going on in the garrison. Because the people in uptown, they, they don't even have a clue what we were going through. They don't know what it's like to just have bread and butter alone with a cup of tea with probably no sugar in the morning and just got to go to school. Mm. They don't know what it's like to walk barefoot in the Axton and the Axfall from Three Mile to Causeway. You know, that is before they repair the bridge. They don't know what it's like to use fish gut and chicken back to catch crab, to, 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 to sell these things, to just make little money. They don't know what it's like to go out on the road with a with a screech to wipe two car glass to make a bit of money. They, they don't know what we've got to go through because a lot of youth choose not to go the wrong way, mm-hmm. which when in a other way, a lot of youth choose to, to, to take the gun out. Mm-hmm. So, so tell me something now. Um, So tell me something now. Let me just ask you something though. So your partner will lead you down a path and then will save you. Will lead you into the wrong path. Through the same poverty. Well, mm-hmm. well leading me in the wrong path is just the peer pressure along with some of the lads that I was growing up with. You know, some of the lads, you know, that I was growing up with was, it was in my same age bracket, but You know, I was a lad with a little small body and because most of this lad was doing road like going out on the sea and pulling skull boat and all them things and that. They get bigger than their body than me and you know, they start carrying guns and whatever and you know, I had was to be um following them and you know, when they do their bullshit, you know, clean up the mess, you know, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, There was a lot of stuff that was going on at the time that, you know, we was just a little inch man that would lock up the trap here where they said to lock it off and clean up the mess after them, you know. And we see a lot of things, man, go on in them times, you know. And it was too much for me, you know, because some of these things, if you don't got a strong um, head piece, then you need to see a psychiatrist, mm. you know. And a lot of us youth that grow in the garrison, we don't get no psychiatrist out from nobody. We have to just live with this anger and this frustration within us. So when somebody bring out this anger out of us, then we just live what we grow. You know, because we grow seeing people get chopped up. We grow in seeing people get stabbed up and all that. We grow in seeing people get shot. So it's like the norm for us, you know what I mean? It's like in Jamaica, if you fire a shot, then people take cover. Here in Europe or in England, if you fire a shot, everybody come out to look. Mm. So they can call the police. You know what I mean? So in a year... So it's two different mentality. Mm-hmm. So in your reign now, them ever lock you up? You get locked up too? I escape that. Yeah, I get, lock, I, I get locked up. I get locked up. But I get locked up several times. I, mean, I should say about two, three times. 
you know, in, in curfew. Like, they come and scrape the area looking for wanted, man, and they got to do, like, an interview. As I, as I try to say, I, I, I try to be on the safe side because my mom is a Christian and I didn't want to let her down. You know, and my father was a disciplined Rastafarian, mm. really. But I get locked up, but like, if curfew come and they scrape up all the guys then in the area, then, then mm. they take me or one morning when I was going to see, then the police hold me and they carry me to check me out and, you know, sometimes it's a mistake in identity, one time they hold me for somebody else and when they realize that it's not me because I call and police that I know in the station, that was one named Mr. Tal P, that's what they call him, Tal P, he was always on the seaside, so he must have known me and he must have talked to him and said, this lad is a good lad, he's always going to church and that and blah, 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 and so... You know, I was released. Yeah, so tell me you something. Know? When you have a church door, you have your, your cronies where you walk with. You are the cleanup man. You are the ins man. You are the ins man. But you're, you still go to church and do your power with them. Yeah, I still go to church, although I was part with them. It was, it was living between uh, two worlds, you know. I mean, I've got my cronies that I'm part with. I used to, even used to walk with my tool as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I used to have my tool as well, but I didn't do no about it, nothing with it, really. Because I said, you know, it's better you have one mm. and, 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 and need it and no, don't have one. So I used to got my tool as well, you know, but at the end of the day, I never necessarily need to use it because, you know, you're coming out of garrison here and you're there on a lot of man that's got their strap and man give you a strap to lock off and he drop out out of a shoe out. So that strap that you get to lock off, it become yours. You know what I mean? Oh. So, so, but on a, on a, on a block a lot of, on a, so on a block a lot of place so for just feeding yourself mm-hmm. and, and, and shear up the loot. We, lot, we, broke, we, we broke all the factories that surround us, every one of them. A lot of factories on this, you know. <laughs> Name some of them. <laughs> Name some of them, serious. A lot of factories on you, you know. Um, we, we, there was one that factory that made Irish mash. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mm-hmm. That and it make Irish mash and vegetable mm-hmm. that get bro- that was broken into. Mm-hmm. Um, we went down on the train line to DNG. We take out the bottles out of DNG, break them and take crates of bottles, mm-hmm. pack them up in shops and go back and sell them to DNG. You know. Yeah, <laughs> laugh. We just say yeah, you know, yeah, man. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. so, but, but, So each time on the block, tell me something. I just want to get it clear. So each time... The zinc factory, right? There. So when I get for Britain, we're not, we're not, we're not we're the terrible man. So when I get for we great, got, the zinc we factory. Got, we, got, we got friends. We got friends that mm-hmm. work inside here. Mm-hmm. Like, there was like here a leader, and and we get the lineup. You know how to mm-hmm. come and take what, and and but how we do the breaking is not like we break it. Yeah. You know, we just get a truck, and the truck comes in, and we get an invite who's not properly, and we just pack up a truck with some things and. And gone. Things gone out and sell and then, you know, yeah, you know, so. We, so tell me we, something we now. Tell me something now. <laughs> so each time when I go up on them break-ins, I want to get some things. I want to be a police to come for them cut. Every time. Every they time? Every time. If they don't take their share, then they terrorize us, man, like dog. You know, a dog would fight over a bone. Serious. That's how they terrorize us, man. Every time they just, as I tell you, they got their, their people down here who's telling them what is what and what is what. You know what I mean? Mm. So when they got their people telling them who is doing what and what is doing what, they're looking for the the head person who actually mm-hmm. orchestrated the robbery. Mm-hmm. So they, they said, listen, we want our cut, you know, this is mm-hmm. a problem. 
So you better have got your share to give him. Mm-hmm. Like one police, he's very brief. They call him Red Bobby. Yeah. When, 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 when man would rob place, he want half. Yeah. Half of the loot. Yeah, him and one they call Panic Benji. That when Benji come to back to, uh, come to on stay as a young um, police officer, he was like um, what we would call a rookie here. You know, they give him like a 38 special to walk within that. And then um, the rest of the police, then they didn't want to have this thing on the of 15 and choose a country boy to just take the 38 from him when they're in the vehicle and give him an of 15. And there was one guy down there that did commit some robbery and they come for their share of the loot. And the guy was running from them and then Benji thought, fire in this area 15 like mad. You know, just letting off beer shot, he doesn't visit, we, we shoot, dog get shot, you know, a pig get shot because there was a lot of dogs running up and down down there at the time, and pigs in that. The man shoots the dog, he shoots the pig, and shoots even a little girl, and then later on he, he, he buy out the case. And the, the guy run away, left him, and run away, left the gun shot, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, so... So then they come, so, I want to get something clear, so... When the robin go on, it's like Uno rob for Uno and on to be a police. Because them not come for lock Uno up. Them come no. for the No, they don't come to lock they just come for their share. They don't come to lock up nobody. They want you to rob so they can get some of the money because they have to go out to the bar or three man to drink their rum. Because all of them is rum it. <laughs> they go they, they go, <laughs> they go these, these police <laughs> these police these Mm. And they have to drink rum all the time for mm. them to actually forget what they did. Mm. So they're always thing. drinking rum. Mm. So in order for them to get their rum money, it's either they go over White Wing and check a bridge and call him Pulpy that they killed. And Pulpy would buy out all the police because they love sweets. So all of the police and Pulpy was friends. Mm. You know what I mean? Pulpy was one of the era leaders in the in the Cockburn Pen constituency, you know, he's even a good friend of mine, even though he passed on and that, you know, you know, mm. but Paul used to give them a lot of things because he used to get things to the Catholic Church, to Father and all that. Mm. So these police just come for their own money. Anywhere the hustling is, they would, would be there. Paul P. used to go a brother who called himself Debbie. He was a faggot. Yeah. You know, before he passed on. And he, would, he, he was one of the top, top canaries. Yeah. This guy could write your signature by just looking at it, and he could fraud any check. He could do anything that you mind could. Do. Yeah. It, you know, think of and he, yeah, the police, them was on his payroll. You know what I mean? Every time he fraud something, they never lock him up. They just come for their share. You know? Yeah, man. Right? Yeah, yeah. He have to do something like a big scam. And when you do a big scam, they bring him up to Arbor Tree and he gets a special treatment. He, he's not locked down in no cell like next man. You know oh. what I mean? He, he so who, who, different treatment really. who was the main police them in a Unsbeer who were run things at the time? Where we kill people, I want to know, so I want to have a turn of the loot. Who are the main police them? Okay, I must have some main man in our where we edit. Like, like Bobby Red was one of the main police. Um, one call himself Knight, call himself Cowboy, was one of the main police. They always come for the loot. Um, him come for loot too. Bobby, him yeah, panic Bobby. Mm-hmm. These, these were the man that was running the thing, you know, man. These were the man that was running the thing, brother. So at the end of the day, they want to share everything with you. You know what I mean? Well, this, this police that, that they call Cowboy is a big thief. He's got even his friends that he used to rob places and they keep loot. They, all of them is criminal. Where you say the Cowboy? Repeat again. In have what? His friends, his bad man friend them, that he used to rob places, line them up to rob places. Even in Mobile, they go on robbery. You know what I mean? All of them man is criminal. They ain't no police. They're just, they're just criminal in police uniform. You know what I mean? They're just thief in police uniform. And and the JCF need a lot of changes, man. They need to get some police and baptize them in church and bond them again and put them in the force. You know what I mean? Because all 
and only them is criminal police. I can remember once, once upon a time, my brother come from America to, to, to visit my sister, and he was driving uh, in his car, and this policeman called up to say police, bad driving, and he must have said to him, go to your mother. And when he said that up, like, slow down, and wait till him come near up with him and pack out his gun you know, through the window and say, boy, what you say? What you say? Uh, and the, the, my brother was like frightened and said, listen, mate, like, you know, I'm not from here, you know. I didn't know. It's because you're bad driving, you know. And he said, you're lucky because my brother was to show him his documents and all that. Mm. To show that he's a foreign and that, so he allowed him. If it was a yard man, who never traveled or, or probably would have dumped him and dumped him with the car as well. Mm. You know what I mean? So in the time when you think of Jamaica police and you hear that they're coming, a fear coming thing that you want a piece of yourself. So I would them lock up some man. Them have some youth to work for them where them use and go rob place. You see, these people are them, 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 them big up on a show and a paper. Our paper and do no investigative journalism, you know. Them just call some people crime fighters. I would say them have crime facilitators. Them create crime. Crime creators. And call them police and say, I'm criminal in a badge. They, yeah. They're the ones that create the, create the crimes, mate. No, man. They're the ones. But listen, I've got to cut the interview because I've got a lesson to give at the minute. So yeah, I'm man. Quite Respect, a, man. Quite a Why? Well, nice, nice, next time, yes, right? man. Nice to talk to you and tell me one now. You make me laugh when you say you uh, on a bun tire and it coming like when people are crack rock when they make a build place a country. You know, you 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 bun the tire and, and at up the wall and then you know, throw water on it and then wrap the the ammo yeah. out and with the big, big, big old sledge, yeah. yeah and and rock, 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 remember, so we know for crack rock in a car, we do building work. I'm do, and build a lot of building all across the maker, so, eh? We rub the hammer mouth with the sponge or towels and then we yeah. just slap the wall. That, that, take, the, that take away the knives. <laughs> take away the, the, the knocking. Mm -mm. Can you take a cock up, you know, like when you cock? Yeah, mm. All right, I'm here, man. I'm here. Yeah? Talk to you again, man. All right, sir. Cool. Bless. Yeah, man. The next. Back to man that, you know. Yeah, yeah, he tell the same used to clean up and thing now get to the end of everything, you know what I'm saying, do, but you can't see, you know, you have, you have, you have truth and you can see the yes and man. And the youth, the man with them, one wow, where them go to. And you know, what go on and western from back then till now. We have to change this. Some way Jamaica can't change. And nobody can't tell me that Jamaica can't change, you know, can't tell me what now. No place. Most people only live at five. I only saw the place big. Jamaica, 2.5 million people. Jamaica, 144 mile by 56 mile. When I talk about can't clean. Come on, when I drive to some state, I'm not afraid drive hundreds and hundreds of miles. Eh? Can't clean? Two people have the wheel and I say, three people have to come out like what people come out and I talk to me. Everybody. Yeah, and say, all right, I'm going to point out who was the, the, the crime facilitators and the crime creators. In a police uniform and 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 all, you understand? Now, so you can get a truth and reconciliation, you know. You understand? Yeah. And we know what go on, and we try to correct it. Cause you have some bigger heads than the police force that the other day commissioner said them do investigation. Look at time him 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 said go do it, and them now have no hitman, no force, and no like that. Say them now have no thief, and them now have no hitman, and them have come on. And a hitman does go kill you to trophy and park or wait one him the youth will keep him that. And a hitman police go kill him. And you really come say that? Mark Mellon get rid of enough police because they must say them come up and go out with them a criminal and everything. And you come say that? I remember, you know, the care what them do, they must have somebody with them sell the drugs to uh, who them transship to and which country. Believe me, the whole of them people there talk to me. Who alive are talk to me? You know, you know, you believe. Now, who know feel so we don't know, we know. Because they link me and they talk to me. You understand? I'm going to carry them life on my show. With the air. So I have to keep it with you. I have to clean Jamaica. Yeah, man. Expose them lonesome. Up. Oh.